Welcome back. Hour two National Football Show. It's your boy Big Sills here. Don't forget Gary Cobb, bottom of the hour here. I think the Bucks miss um, Bruce Arians. I think they miss Bruce Arians. Um, Bruce was more of a delegator. And I think Todd is still in that main headset for the defense. And that they've allowed Tom Brady and Byron Leftwich to be on an island by themselves. A good head coach molds that and weaves that together. I think Todd is still figuring that out. And I think it's evident because it looks totally like two different teams. There's no doubt. I'll tell you something too about Nick Sirianni. Would we agree this? That Nick Sirianni right now is the front runner to be the NFL coach of the year? Would you agree? That Nick Sirianni right now, you would have to put him in the top spot right now for NFL coach of the year. Would there be anyone else? Maybe Brian Dable? What he's doing with the Giants is remarkable. It is. It's remarkable what he's doing with the Giants. Okay? Right? That's a pretty damn good coaching job that's going on in New York with him. Here's a guy in his first year as a head coach in National Football League. He's absolutely opening every – hey, i got to tell you, I did not believe that Brian Dable was a guy that had completely turned that entire organization around in just a brief few months. Dave Gettleman had that thing – in ruin. It was like Rome on fire. And he has gone in there with the new GM and they have absolutely masterfully turned the entire like image around of the New York Giants. They play hard. They're disciplined. They look better in the O-line. Pretty damn good stuff. I mean, it really, really looks good. Really does. Sean says, Sills, will you keep your word? And hang a Hurts jersey on the wall if he throws for 4,000 yards. I will. I will. Sirianni doesn't look like chicken parm. He'd rather have meatball parmesan. Thank you very much, maniac. So would I. New York is a shocker this year. Rage, both teams, right? Jets and Giants, man. Look at the job uh, that the GM has done in New York. And look at what's gone on in New York with the Giants. It's been remarkable. I mean, I can't believe that that thing has turned around the way it has. Brian Dable is at, by the way, this would have to go down the line of this. You'd have to think Ken Dorsey, the offensive coordinator that took over. Look at the job that he's doing. He goes into Kansas City. There's no drop-off. Actually, Josh Allen looks better. I'm glad I told Ken Dorsey, don't take the Miami Hurricane offensive coordinating job. Because you're going to get some looks to be a head football coach in the NFL. I wouldn't be shocked if he gets the Carolina job. They're looking for that kind of guy, former player, young, goes by all the analytics. He's one of those guys that's going to work with a front office. You see these guys, you know, Kevin Stefanski, all these young, Nick Sirianni. You see all these, Jonathan Gannon. You see all these young guys with limited experience, but yet they go into a place and they know how to use the analytics and they know how to work with the front office. And look at the coaching staff that Sean McDermott. Hey, by the way, did McDermott ever get any look to be the Eagles head football coach? Did he ever get any run at being that guy? He has been fabulous in Buffalo. He's been sensational. Look at the job that he has done since he's taken over. Dude, the Patriots... Hey, isn't it funny? The Patriots right now are maybe in a position right now where they're, again, in a Drew Bledsoe and Tom Brady kind of situation here with Bailey Zappi. Bailey Zappi could take Mac Jones' job, which is insane. It's insane what's going on. They actually look pretty good with this guy, Bailey Zappi. We're going to talk about week six here in a second. I want to get to Jalen Hurts in this hour, too. And I want to get to that. But again, hey, before we go there, what hurts? We talk about money. 11 to 12. Regular season ball games, Jalen Hurts has won. That's impressive. 
It's impressive. For me, 11 to 12. Okay, regular season games. This kid's doing it. He's doing it. He's winning. He's winning his way, not my way. This is the difference in this conversation. It's not so important how I want him to win. It's important he's winning his way. This here is what's important. They fired McDermott when he was D.C.? Wow. Well, I'll tell you what. He could pick coaches. Okay? He's winning his way. Hertz is not an elite passer. But you know what he's turning himself into? An elite quarterback. When you win 11 of 12. Now, watch this. Kirk Cousins is an elite passer. Is he an elite quarterback? Who would you rather be? Okay. Not everybody's the same. Tom Brady turned himself into being an elite passer. He was never an elite athlete. Not like Aaron Rodgers is 10 times the athleticism, and he's 10 times the arm talent and passer that Brady ever was. Brady made himself into that guy. Hard work, determination, dedication, film study, and everything. All of it. That's how he made himself Tom Brady. Okay? Ty says this, I'm getting a little scared with all the injuries to the O-line. Hey, Ty, never come from a place of fear. You're the freaking Eagles. You got the best O-line coach in the league. Don't fear that. Go out and play the game. You want to be worried about shit like that. That's wasted time. Okay? That stuff that makes you sit in a room it can make your hair fall out. There's so many other things to worry about. Special teams. Okay? Special teams. Your DC. That soft-ass stuff in the second half. So many more things to worry about than what may happen. Now, look, I'm not saying that you don't prepare for what may happen. But how he has put implemented all these things that could happen. Andre Dillard's coming back. Get this, Jack Driscoll is getting a he's getting a offensive lineman's degree right now at being this play left guard or left tackle, play right guard. Maybe he's got to play a little left guard. Do you know how valuable that is? Look at what you're doing for Jack Driscoll. You're now turning this guy into Mariano Rivera. You can play anything. He's your reliever, top reliever. Then when Dillard comes back, you got Dillard and Driscoll. Hang in there. This guy will get it right because he has. Okay? Because he has. See what Nicholas said. Yes. He's average but has versatility. Hey, Nicholas, get this. You're right. He may not be the best left offensive tackle or the best right guard, but I'll tell you what. Isn't it cool to have a guy that could play all three positions? Right guard, left guard, left tackle. Should probably play right tackle. When wh- Right? That is a massive asset to have. It's a massive asset. Evans goes, fools that call Jalen a running back are absolute clowns. He was a year ago. 3,100 yards, he was a better runner a year ago. That's changing. Dude, don't try to rewrite history and revise it and make it sound like he was some elite passer last year. This guy had 16 touchdown passes. That's not elite. 3,100 yards is not elite. In 15 or 16 games, that's not elite. He's turning himself into that. You're making it sound like you're revising history. Six games. His six games this year do not look anything near the six games a year ago. And don't make it sound like it was. And stop pretending that you like the pick. I could go like this with each and every single one of you right now. You're lying if you say you didn't. 
that you hated to pick when he was a second rounder and the Eagles took him. Stop lying. That all of a sudden now you're some Jalen Hurts pom-pom waver when you hated the pick and you take shots at what I'm saying about him. You're an absolute liar. Nobody liked the pick. Nobody. Okay? Who said something about Troy Aikman? That's more than... You know what Aikman did? Aikman's playing the game the same way Jalen did. Didn't really put up big offensive numbers. He just handed the ball to Emmett. Threw the ball to Michael on third down. Gee, what's different in the Eagle offense? Jalen's not going to... Jalen might not throw for 25 touchdowns this year. He's got six. Okay? He's got six. He's on pace for 16 TDs. 17. Okay? But he plays like a little like Aitman. Okay? I love the pick. I copped the number two Hertz Eagles jersey. <laughs> Shrimp Wentz, dude, Carson Wentz. Did he lose his job yet? Has he lost his job yet in Washington? Hall of Famer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Dominico, he's up pace for 4,000 passing yards with 155 last night and whatever he did last week. You're right, Dominique. I'm sure that'll keep up with 16 touchdowns. Be the only guy in the history of the NFL with 16 touchdowns and 4,000 passing yards. Okay. Oh, yeah, I, I I know that you didn't. Watch this. Here's a guy here. Uh, David, I never hated the pick. I always thought he was good. Okay, yeah, I'm, no, I know. You're probably in the minority. Yeah. <laughs> I like the pick. Oh, yeah, everybody likes the pick now. Really? That's not what I heard back in the day. There wasn't a person in Philly who was on the air even liked it. When Wentz or when Wentz was there and they took Hertz in the second pick, really? Now we got all these. Oh, I liked it. I liked it. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, I'm sure you did. <laughs> okay. Whatever, people. Classic. Classic. That's what social media is. That's what social media has done to our society. We like to revise history, and they think because if you knock a statue down, that changes Columbus Day. Whatever, dude. <laughs> if we knock Wentz. Down and, you know, we love Jalen. Yeah, right. Okay. Sure you did. All right. Most important question. Most important. By the way, this Jalen Hurts pick may eventually turn into be Howie Roseman's greatest pick, including Jason Kelsey and some of these other dudes. It may be his greatest pick. Don't forget Gary Cobb, bottom of the hour from Fox 29. We'll get his take as they head into the bye. What is the one metric? Here, I'll tell you what I'll do. I won't throw mine out until you throw yours out. What's the one metric you think that you can use right now to pay Jalen the money that you want? We'll figure out what that is. What is the one the one thing that Clutch Sports is going to come to the table with when they're talking to Howie Rose and they're talking to Jeffrey Lurie? We're in the buy now. It's six and zero. You just beat Dallas. What's the one metric? I'm trying to figure it out. Help me. What is the one metric that you can use? Winning? Well, there's guys that win in the league and they don't get paid big money. Okay. Winning. It's got to be part of it. His versatility. Um, leadership. Okay. Winning, versatility, leadership. Hertz takes a team deal. He's not taking a team deal. He is not taking a team deal. Stop thinking because he's an eagle, he's going to take a team deal. He's not. Clutch sports does not take team deals. Nobody in their mind would ever think that Clutch Sports is going to walk in there and go, what are you guys looking at? You put a number down, we're good at it. 
That is stupidity. Plus, he's a running quarterback. Hey, and I'll make this point to you too, and I tweeted this out about Josh Allen. Josh Allen, when he beat the Chiefs over the weekend, that dude's got to stop that shit. He ain't lasting. As as great as he is, you need to stop that shit. Or you're going to have an ended career before Jalen even has that. Because you are taking too many unwanted hits. And Buffalo needs to fix that shit before they lose a franchise quarterback. Okay? He should take a team deal if he wants to win. Dan, I, I, I agree. That's what Brady did. Okay? That's what Brady did. I agree. G says, Sills, I've been telling you about Josh. Dude, he was really reckless in that Chiefs game. Those, 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 those runs down the sideline, you got to stop that shit, guy. You have got to stop that. Or you're not going to make the season. Shit, I'm talking about Jalen Hurts getting banged up. This guy here is reckless. He plays like Andrew Luck. This guy's like Andrew Luck, and he's getting beat up. And I'm telling you, I, I don't, I don't know. You need to, you, you, you need to come up with a way of protecting that guy a tad bit more, or there's going to be problems in Buffalo. They lose that guy, it is over. Jalen's playing on the cheap now. Okay, yeah, he's making 1.4 million bucks. The guy at Alabama who's hurt, Bryce Young. By the way, I, I get it. Vols is a big win. Hey, watch this. Huge win for the Vols. Alabama will pick themselves up and end up getting into the playoff. I got them fifth. I still put them fifth. Okay? Fifth. Michigan, hey, watch this. Real quick, and I'll get back to the money here and what we're talking about with Jalen. If you had Michigan lined up against Alabama with Bryce Young playing, what would the point spread be? 21? 20? What would the point spread be? That's all you need to know about the next guys in the next tier teams. There's no team from the Big Ten that would be a any closer than 20-point dog to Alabama right now, even losing to the Vols. Josh Allen is Carson Wentz. What an idiot comment. He goes into Kansas City and beats Patrick Mahomes. And he's Carson Wentz. How dumb can you be? 6-0. and oh. We're going to get back to this conversation. But I'll tell you what, man. It was a benchmark game. And it was a, without a doubt, it was a statement game for Jalen. And when you look at the numbers, like I said, they're, they're not exceptional numbers, but you know what they did? Two most important numbers in this ball game. The Cowboys had 10 penalties for 72 yards, and the Cowboys had three turnovers. They made they made the cow they made the Cowboys have to have Cooper Rush win that game. Perfect game plan. He can't. Dak is I'm not saying Dak would have beat the Eagles. You get him a better chance. Let's get to our friend from Fox 29, Gary Cobb. And get Gary's thoughts here on this. Eagles now 6-0, and Gary. And G. Cobb, I got to say, man, I mean, you know, they weren't exceptional offensive statistics last night, held under 300 yards in total offense.